All right, just a little quick walk through, keep y'all informed on our progress. I got the actuators put on today, tuned up and everything, and the cabling for them. So they're all ready now. I did these arms a little shorter than I did on the other one. Um, I was hoping to get a little more rotation out of it. And I did manage to get a little more rotation. I, I got probably five or six degrees more tilt now in both directions. And strength wise, I think it's still got plenty of power. Um, I think the thing's probably over horsed on actuators. Doing the math, I think three of them will do the job. And we got seven of them on here. But it does make it really sturdy. I mean, if you look at this, there is no play in it at all so when the wind blows it doesn't oscillate and i just wonder if it only had three of them on there if, if there might be more play and it might oscillate and if it got to oscillate and if it could rip the actuators apart i'm not sure which way that would go so for now we have seven um and the cabling, tucked a little wire nuts underneath. And I've flopped these around like somebody in the comments said, put the motor up top next to the where the panels are gonna be. I like that idea, it's probably a good one. Um, Cause all the openings will shed the water going down except for this one right here. But I looked at that earlier on one of the other ones and I can back those screws out and put some silicone around that and then screw it back down. And then I think that would make them effectively water resistant for what we're doing. Because we had one fail on the very end of the first grid. I came out here earlier this week and it was broken and hanging off. It had pulled the, it's like it had rotated on around and just pulled the end out of it. So I took it back and I took it apart to look at it and sure enough it had water in it. And uh, it was running slower than, than all the other ones. And that's the only one that's not underneath the panels. It's out past the panels so it was exposed to the rain and we did have a couple days rain. Week before last. So flipped over, not under the panels. The rain will definitely get in it. Um, and it definitely does affect them. So next day or two, we're not supposed to have any rain for a minute. But the next day or two in the evening, I'm going to, after those go to sleep, I'm going to go down and flop all the actuators around so they're this way. I think that will be a lot better. But anyways, I put them on this way, on this one. We'll give this a go. I think it is a better idea. And uh, they're all done now. We can walk down here and uh, give it a little test spin. I brought the cable to try to even up the load because I think they all kindly move the same. I don't think the difference in their movement is really noticeable to the overall, as long as they're all functioning properly. And you notice there's one cable here and then there's two cables here. And that's because I brought the feed all the way down to here and started it in the center. So it's exactly even going out just for wire resistances. And that should keep the voltage pretty much the same on all of them. And I was thinking we could go to four or even five and just run them directly off the battery pack, the 52 volt battery pack. And if we run them in series, I think that might solve a couple of problems because in a series circuit, the current draw has to be the same on each device that would force them to move the same. And secondly, if you had one fail, it would shut the whole thing down. 
which would be a good thing because when you have one fail and they're in parallel, everything else just moves and it just crushes that one actuator. And uh, the upside is all the mounting hardware, the gear, the structure itself, all that held, it just folded the actuator in half. So it's good to know that, that everything is sufficiently strong. But I think if you wired them in series, you might solve both problems at the same time. If four or five of them would would accomplish the task, and I, I believe it would. I believe four of them would be fine. And five of them, I think, would definitely be fine too. I think even if you just took out the next to last one on either side, you'd have them every other post, and I think that would be fine. I did try flexing it earlier when I only had three of them hooked up. And there was flex, if I put my body weight on it, I could flex that pipe in between, tweak it, but just barely. And I don't know if that would be enough to matter. So on the next run, I may, I may try just putting four of them on there and running them in series and see, see how that works. Because it should even them up. And then if you did have one fail, it would just shut the whole rack down. And you'd be able to tell that pretty easy just by looking out the window. Be like, why is that one hunting when all the other ones are fishing? Um, but that's, that's what I did. They're, they're fed from the center here out to try to keep the voltage drop consistent. And uh, we're going down here. I just got a cordless drill battery. To run them on for now. I didn't feel like dragging a car battery out. So just grabbed one of my DeWalt batteries. <clears throat> and it won't hurt them to run them on a higher voltage. It's actually better for them. They'll draw less current. Um, as long as you don't exceed the insulation rating on the windings in the motor then it doesn't make any difference when we built robots we we ran 12 volt motors on 48 volts all the time they just perform a whole lot better because every time you double the voltage you quadruple the power it's not linear it's logarithmic All the little creeks, little bearings rolling. I think there's some splatter from the well that they roll over a little bit. All right, well, that's all the way in the easterly direction. And like I said, I got, I got about three to five more degrees of tilt out of this one, this way, and then the other one. We'll run it back the other way. I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone. It's pretty cool. When it's quiet, except for the drone of the air cooled miners. Yeah, watch it back. But if you look down through there, man, it's it's all moving together. 
I think one pulling on the other ones, if one's trying to go faster, I think they're going to balance themselves out anyway. I'm just more concerned about one failing and not moving completely. The problems that that'll cause. was a lot better hooking all this stuff up without the panels on there. <laughs> It's all the way the other way. They got limit switches in them. That's why I don't worry about where they stop. They'll stop when they get to the end. <clears throat> Otherwise, you have to put limit switches on your solar controller to move them. So these were pretty handy. Run them back up to flat just because it'll be easier to work tomorrow i'm gonna do the conduit get the wires run get the controller mounted get everything everything ready and then saturday or maybe tomorrow evening when the sun's gone down like this i'll come out and start swapping panels and and then try to do them in chunks and then do them in the evening time again I hate to take anything offline with Bitcoin being a, over 120. But I like it. I think this one might be a little bit better than the other one just simply because we learn a little each time and these are a little taller so I think the, I shouldn't have to cut the rings off of the top of the holders. Hopefully these will hold the panels up high enough now that they'll miss those and I won't have to cut those off. And uh, we got a little more rotation out of it by shortening this up a little bit. And maybe on the next one I may try shortening it up even just a tiny bit more. And uh, because there's still a little bit of clearance, it could rotate a little bit more with these particular actuators. But that's about it.